Welcome to Central Church's online devotional ministry. These short devotions are intended to provide inspiration and hope to all people, including our friends, neighbors, and church members. We hope that you find them both meaningful and helpful as you search for spiritual food. It's our prayer that you discover new ways to serve Christ and be about His work in the world. Here's Pastor Bob. Hello again. I've been out of town for a couple of weeks. And while I was away in Eugene, Oregon, I had the opportunity to attend the service of the Great Organ Solo Mass by the composer Franz Joseph Haydn. And as I listened to the beautiful music and considered the words of the liturgy in the bulletin, it occurred to me that they are relevant words for us, what we find there. Pertinent for when it was written and pertinent for our time today. The liturgy is about the centrality of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do works that I do, and greater works than these will he do. John 14. Jesus is the key. He is the center. He is the cornerstone. And that is what is emphasized in the liturgy again and again. What kind of works do we do in the church today? The church has a lot of wealth. The church has a lot of power and authority manifests itself in many ways. 44,000 different Christian denominations in the world. Are those the great works that Jesus was talking about? I think not. Church uses words like excommunication and anathema. Perhaps if we concentrated on the words that we find in our traditional services, the words of the creed, and centered our attention upon Jesus, how much better off we would we be? Acts 4 tells us, Peter in his great sermon on the day of Pentecost preaches, This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. In the liturgy we find, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. The need of the mercy of God in a world that is out of balance. A world that sees a great and vast accumulation of wealth in the hands of the few, and very little or nothing in the hands of many. A world where there is terrible environmental destruction that goes on and on. A world where there is war and conflict, where Bruegel's famous painting, The Triumph of Death, could be a painting for each and every age, and even for 2023. A world in which there is ill will and hatred, a lack of commonality, and the impossibility of dialogue. But we also find in the liturgy that God is not harsh toward people. The goodwill of God is expressed. The message of the angels on the night that Jesus was born in Bethlehem was, on whom his favor rests. The favor, the goodwill of God rests upon us in Jesus Christ because he has come as the liturgy emphasizes to take away the sins of the world. And there is such a thing as sin. The secular psychiatrist Carl Benninger wrote a book a generation, more than a generation ago, Whatever Became of Sin. Well, there is such a thing as sin, transgression, rebellion. We miss the mark that God has set for us. Sin is an offense against God, against others, and against ourselves. And Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus sits, we find in the liturgy, at the right hand of God. He demonstrates the mercy of God as he died on the cross, and even today. 
In the liturgy is the Credo, the singing of the Creed, the Nicene Creed. And in that Creed we find that Jesus is the light of light, very God of very God, of one substance with God the Father. For our salvation and all peoples, Jesus came down from heaven. And we find that that is emphasized for us in his birth, in his nativity, in his crucifixion, his death upon the cross, in his resurrection, and in his ascension. God is worshipped and glorified in Jesus Christ, his Son. And then the whole earth is full of the glory of God, the Sanctus. The whole earth is full of the glory of God, the value and beauty of God's creation. We as human beings are created in the image of God. The world expresses the grandeur of God as the poet Gerard Manley Hopkins wrote 150 years or so ago. Value and beauty, grandeur in God's creation, majesty in Jesus Christ his Son. Because the Agnes Day, he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Grant us peace, Haydn's powerful organ solo ends with grant us peace, a triumphant prayer for peace, majestic, expressed by the composer that resounds across time. May we listen to the beautiful music that has been composed. May we listen to the words of our liturgies different as they may be, all centered upon Jesus Christ. And may we ask that God grant us peace in this year of 2023. Let us pray. O Lord and God, we thank and praise you for Christ your Son. We praise you for the gifts that you have given to human beings who are able to express the glory of your salvation as the composer Haydn has been able to do. And may we listen to your word and listen to your voice. Grant us peace in Jesus' name. We invite you to visit our church website at cpctoranum.org to learn more about our ministries. You can also visit us on Facebook at Central Presbyterian Church Tarenum. Please join us as we renew lives, inspire hope, and serve others. God bless you.